Minecraft 1.20 is almost out, so I'm here to tell you everything you need to know about it. Minecraft 1.20 is actually a really big update, but it's like features that you wouldn't think would fit together, but they do. There's a few features added separate from most of the other features. This includes a chisel bookshelf, which is insane. You can take the book out and uh, put them back in in whatever slot you want. This is pretty insane already. And the hanging signs. Look at this sign. This hangs rather than actually having to be placed on something. It is a bit smaller and um, yeah, that's a hanging sign. Anyway, on the subject of signs, um, look, you can now right click with an open hand, nothing in my hotbar, and uh, you can now edit the sign. Uh, yep, there we go. Um, and also, bonus, you can now edit the back of the sign. Yeah, that's insane. Like, that is actually crazy. And you dye them separately, so as you can see, this one. You can also dye this one, like, whatever color you want. And uh, the front one will be dyed separately. Um, also, if you do want... Oh, if you do want to lock the sign, right click it with the honeycomb and now you cannot edit the sign anymore. But you still can edit the sign. This works on both of the signs, also you can edit the back of this normal sign as well, which is pretty cool. Another thing to do with the chiseled bookshelf is it will output a signal of the last slot you affected. So uh, I built this a bit wrong, so this powers both of these, don't worry about it. But this is signal strength 1, this is 2. This is three, as you can see, every book, every book I put in, it goes up. You can't actually reset it to zero not until you break and place the bookshelf down again. And moving on, we have camels, a new mob, the only new mob added to 1.20. And uh, this is a mob that has a really special ability. Like the horse, you can ride it, but two people can actually ride it. I'm on a single player world, I can't really demonstrate this, but if the second person gets on, they'll get on that back seat there. And uh, the front person controls the camel, the back person is just riding the camel, it's just a passenger. And if I take the lead off of this, if we go ride them around, I'll show you the other ability they have. You can see those little floppy ears walking, walking uh, flapping about in the wind. And uh, unlike a horse, they will not jump, but they'll dash forward, as you can see. Like the horse, they have this little bar at the bottom there. Um, and if you charge it up, it'll dash forward. This is called, according to the subtitles, uh, you can watch, this is actually a yeet. So uh, yeah, camels can yeet, I guess. And the other cool thing about this, I can't, I don't really know how to demonstrate this, but mobs won't be able to reach you. So like a zombie uh, who's attacking you, the, uh, the camel's too high for the uh, zombie to reach. And they can also jump over um, fences. They'll just walk over it. It's a one and a half block tall height, they will just walk over it. Um, I don't know if they'll pathfind over it, they might, so you might need a higher fence if you want to keep one of these guys in a certain area. But yeah, they're the, that's the camel. Um, they can also do this cool lying down thing, I don't know how to get them out, no clue. But yeah, that's the camel. Um, if we continue over, we have this new block. As you can see here, this is called Suspicious Sand. Um, and uh, you can't actually collect this block, you find them in desert temples and stuff. I'll tell you what they do like in a second. And there's also a new block, Suspicious Gravel. These two work in the same mechanics. If they drop from an, a, a place, they'll just break, even if there's nothing below it. Look, there's nothing, it's just a block, it'll break. If we go over here, we have this, res this crafting recipe, and if we craft it, you can see we get a brush. Um, and this brush, what it does is the long-awaited archaeology feature. So if you hold down on a piece of suspicious gravel or suspicious sand, it will slowly start to break. And naturally generated blocks of these things will give you loot. Like, you, a little item will pop out the edge there and um, eventually it will break and turn into normal sand. Um, but the loot, there's a massive loot table of all sorts of items. There's a few here I can show you. There's glass panes and like candles, shot, pottery sherds, which we'll get into in a second, and armor trims. Both these we'll get to in a second. There's also a new structure, and if we go over here, oh, you can see, hopefully, uh, there it is. This is a pretty insane structure, but this is all, uh, this is normal gravel, but there will be suspicious gravel if we dig down a bit more. Uh, let's see if we can find any. 
Yeah, there's a piece. There's a piece of suspicious gravel. It looks pretty much the same as normal gravel, so be careful not to break that. Anyway, you'll find these just randomly throughout your world, and uh, what these are supposed to be, uh, it's called a trail ruin. It's filled with random like blocks, colorful blocks, and it's a full-on structure. So if we go into cre if we go into spectator, you can see. This is like a full structure under the ground. You can excavate a bunch of this stuff out, and um, you'll know you get when you get to the bottom because you'll see a bunch of these cobblestone bits. This is like the hallways. The floor is mainly made of cobblestone and stone, and uh, there's also a bunch of other stuff you can uh, explore. It's really hard to visualize in a video, but you see there's all sorts of random blocks all over the place. You can start esca like excavating this it all out. As, uh, and this is all part of the archaeology feature, like as in this is a new structure you can explore, but you actually have to dig through it and try out which, which way works. Back over here, using these pottery sherds, they, they are the, the technical word for them is sherd, so I am pronouncing that right, not an accident. And if you take any of these, they have all sorts of different patterns on them. If you Look, there's a bunch of them, there's a bunch of different pottery sh sherds but, um, that you can find through archaeology. But if we put any of them or bricks onto into a crafting table like this, you'll get a decorated pot with the patterns that you put on. So if we place it down, you can see that we have a fishing rod there, we have a, uh, then we have a, a, little, like a hands up guy there. The sword as well, and this one's just a blank face because we had a, a brick. And if we put just bricks in the crafting recipe, it will just be a blank decorated pot. Next, armor trims. This is one of my favorite features from 1.20. These are armor trims, and you find them through archaeology all over. No, you don't. You can find them through archaeology, I think. And, uh, but you can also find them in every single structure in the game, ocean monuments, uh, end cities, everything. Anyway, if you grab a piece of armor, so if we go netherite boots, and um, let's go with a color. So we need a, let's go redstone, redstone. So all at each ore or something, including amethyst, uh, amethyst shards will give it a different color and each one has a different pattern. Um, so if we put this here, and this, this, you put the smithing template into this bot, and um, you put the color you want on it, and there you go. It will give you a little preview of the item, and um, yeah, you can change the colors around. There's also different colors, uh, but yeah, if we just put this on, for example, we get some cool netherite boots, some purple netherite boots. These look insane. There's, I think, twelve in total. I think I could be getting that wrong, but that's armor trims for you to explore. Um, yeah. Anyway, moving on, we have a brand new bamboo type. I mean, I mean wood type, not bamboo type. Um, this is the new bamboo wood, and uh, as you can see, they've got every single spot thing. And uh, we have this cool new item, I guess. It's called a bamboo raft. Bamboo raft. Bamboo raft with chest and also the bamboo raft as well. This is just the boat. It is the same hitbox. So if I place this down, it is the same hitbox. Uh, there's no, no difference. It's just a different, it's just a cool new texture for it. It's a cool new model. It does the same thing as a normal boat. Anyway, that's the bamboo wood. Um, as you can see, there's also this, in, as well as the planks, so there's the bamboo planks, but there's also the bamboo mosaic which is a variation of the plank, I guess. It comes in the slab stairs and I think just slabs and stairs and the plank, obviously. But yeah, there's also every single other block as you expect. Yeah, anyway, that's, that's pretty cool. You craft it with, I think, four pieces of bamboo in a crafting table. So if we go like that, look, like that. Nine pieces of bamboo in the crafting table. You get a bamboo, a block of bamboo, and crafting it again, Crafting again gives you planks. Speaking of new wood types, there's the new cherry blossom, cher cherry wood type. It comes with everything a normal wood type would have: logs, uh, wood, stripped log, stripped wood, planks, stairs, slabs, boats, um, trapdoors, uh, doors, 
it makes it has a cool new sound effect as well. Uh, it comes with buttons and this cool thing called the pink petals. Um, this spawns in the biome I'm about to show you, but they uh, they have four different growth stages. They won't grow by themselves. You have to either bone meal them or place more on top of them. But yeah, you can see this is the one, this is the two, there's three there and four. But yeah, that's a cool flower that spreads across all, the entire block rather than just the middle of it. But yeah, as you can see, you have the signs and all of these are editable, the gates, everything. Um, if I and this wood type comes with a whole new biome. This is the cherry blossom biome, I think cherry grove or whatever. Let me check. Yeah, this is the cherry grove biome. It spawns in high up spaces and. Yeah, so this is yeah, so this is a cherry grove biome. Look at these cool particles. These leaves drop, so these leaves give off these really nice particles, similar to the spore blossom, and they blow in the wind. I've never seen that. I th I didn't know that. Oh my god, that's cool. But anyway, as you can see, all these petals are on the floor everywhere. You've got a nice looking tree. It's sort of like a 2D log thing. So, but look at this biome. It looks absolutely insane. The best thing about this, I saw, I saw this, is that the water looks so good with the grass in this. It looks so fairy tale ish. It, it's just insane. Look, look at this. Look, look at just look at this. This is so cinematic. Anyway, that's the cherry grove biome, and, the, and a bonus cool thing, I guess. This is the darkest and the lightest wood at the same time. It's just a nice little fact. No, there's nothing special, <laughs> but yeah. If we take a look over here, there, these are bonus features. So as you can see here, there's a this cool new block. It's crafted with a skulk sensor in the middle here, and then amethyst shards here, here, and here. I forgot to do a crafting recipe for this. I'll put it on screen. Uh, but what this does, it's just a normal skulk sensor, but it filters through only the uh, signal coming through from this purple side. So you input a redstone signal from this purple extra bit. If we open this book, you can see. Let's just let's do a signal strength of seven, and uh, this this will output a six, seven into there. And this will only output a redstone signal when it senses a seven. Um, but let's do let's try one. Let's try one. Yeah. So one is footsteps, and as you can see, it outputs signal when it detects footsteps. Anyway, that's pretty cool. It's called a calibrated skulk sensor. Um, but yeah, we have this cool new thing, and. Uh, it's a uh, it's mob heads. These these ones have already existed in game already, but this one, the piglin head, is a brand new thing. If I put it on and walk around, you can see. Look at my little ears; they're flapping in, in with my footsteps. Um, but yeah, this is the cute. This is a, such a cool block. It's got a special model as well, like the Ender Dragon one does. But a bonus, a bonus with this feature is that. Uh, note blocks, so this is the note block. If you put a mob head on top of it, it will now play the ambient sound of that mob. If I, if I give this a... There you go, I'm not adding this over the top, this is in-game. That is a bit loud, but if we put piglin on, it will make a piglin mm -hmm. noise. Yeah, there we go. If we put an ender dragon on, it will make an ender dragon noise. If we put a zombie on, it's a zombie noise. Put a wither skeleton on, so with a skeleton noise, but this is just so cool. It's it, it's such the it's the best feature for pranking. Like put this in under someone's base, they'll never know what it is. But yeah, anyway, that's that's just an insane feature. I love this feature. Anyway, speaking of music and sounds, we can come over here and take a look at this. There's been updates to the jukebox. So this is a jukebox, not a notebook. Um, but yeah. Um, there has been a new music disc called Relic. So if we put this in, um, let's take a listen. Yeah, that's the Relic music disc. Um, and as if you noticed, I actually put the music disc through the hopper. I didn't just right click in the jukebox. It actually went through the hopper. So if I, this is a parity feature. Oh, jeez, the piglin head. <laughs> I forgot about that. But this is a parity feature with Bedrock, where um, hoppers now put music discs into 
no it blocks. They also take them out, but it is blocked by the, the, the signal it outputs, because now, when it's playing a music disc, it not only outputs the signal strength of the music disc like it did before, but it also just outputs a raw redstone signal, which is insane. So if I put this in, it's a full 15 redstone signal, um, and yeah, that's what's stopping this hopper. But if we play this music disc until it ends, um, this will unpower, uh, this will stop powering the, the hopper, letting it flow through, and uh, the hopper will actually pick up and take the music disc out of the notebook again. And uh, yeah, that's 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 pretty cool. Anyway, if we head over here, um, we have a, a few bug fixes. So uh, this is the, this is only the major bug fixes. There are more, uh, way more bug fixes, but these are the ones that you should be uh, you should know before playing this. You should probably know about this update. Anyway. Um, if you if you play survival a lot and if you like the tech more technical side of Minecraft and stuff You'll know that if you go into survival and uh, you're on the edge of a magma block You actually won't take damage when you unshift, but now that has been fixed um, You will actually now take damage no matter how close to the edge you are and uh, This works for every single block any block effect like soul sand blocks will still be applied when you're on the edge of a block but the notable ones are the the magma blocks obviously the honey blocks you actually keep being stuck when you're on the edge of this slime block it will still bounce so I'm on right on the edge of it and if I fly up I will now bounce on the edge of a slime block now this is massive for parkour because you just have to land in the middle not too close to the edge the last one is ice if you're on the edge you'll now continue to slide along ice this works for yeah, soul sand as well as i said before but the last thing in this video is actually crazy so now if we go through another portal let me go through survival so we get the full effect if we go through another portal you will see that the nether is completely clear, you don't get this swirly effect from the portal anymore and you can come out and check the danger, maybe you're over lava pool, you don't have to try to maybe use the nausea effect and try to like place a block there to try to bridge out when you're over lava pool, that's insanely cool, oh there's a pig that I'm probably just gonna leave okay, uh, yep it works the other way around as well, this is apparently a bug, I didn't even know that, that put in the comments if you knew that was supposed to be a bug not a feature in the game. I thought it was just how it was supposed to work. But anyway, that is everything in Minecraft 1.20. Okay, so after I finished filming this whole video, I remembered that I forgot something. And um, I forgot the sniffer. How did how did I forget the sniffer? Like, this is what happened. Out of what? But anyway, the sniffer is the new mob. It was announced in the mob vote. It's here. Uh, but anyway, what the sniffer does, it will sniff around the ground and find these like stuff, these new plants. These new plants, the pitcher pot plant and the torch flowers, you actually plant onto farmland. So there you go, there's the there's a torch flower, they look like sweet berries, and there's the pitcher plant. Anyway, they grow into flowers. There you go, there's the uh, picture plant but yeah this is the new plants uh, if you break these you actually get this thing this uh, picture plant and you can place it down wherever you want but obviously you lose this thing which is kind of sad you can breed them with the torch flower seeds and I'm pretty sure they drop yeah, there we go a sniffer egg not this one not the creative mode one this one if you place it down it looks like this it takes about 20 minutes to hatch like a turtle egg does but if you place it down on moss, it actually halves the time to like 10 minutes or something. That, that's what the sniffer is. Uh, don't know how I forgot it, but there you go. That is everything in Minecraft 1.20. If you want to see why Minecraft 1.20 will change the game forever, click this video on the screen right now. Comment what's your favorite feature of Minecraft 1.20, and I'll see you in the next video.